Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker. And today we're going to be looking at my goals for 2022. So I have most of my goals written out, typed out, put in my um, journal. We'll also go do a journal flip through of what I've done so far in my 2022 journal. I still have some more work left to do in it. Um, and I have not yet made my project list of things I want to ensure that I get done this year or really try to focus on getting done this year. Before I get started on discussing my goals, as with the 2021 video, I uh, goals and review video I did, which will be linked in an iCard or at the end of the video or something like that. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to... Anyway... I did want to remind you guys that no way, shape, or form are these goals set up or designed to be a task list or to create stress while crafting. These are ways to help remind myself of what I intended to do and not forget what my goals were. This isn't a ya mule kind of thing. This isn't, you know, this, you know, life happens. Things don't work out. Things change. Plans change. Events change. These are not, you know, hard and fast, this must be done. These are concepts at the beginning of the year that I would like to try to focus on. Uh, if you are one of those people who are really, 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 you know, you make a list and you force yourself to follow it, no matter if you're finding joy in it or not, don't set out goals like these that are very specific. Set out concepts like, you want to track your yarn usage or you want to track your product usage. You want to look at your empties at the end of the month. You want to, you know, maybe track yardage and weight to see how much you're using, see how much you're going through. And maybe next year you can be like, well, you know, I didn't really take advantage of all my time. So maybe I want to increase my, my used yarn by like two pounds or something. Don't set very specific goals unless there are very specific things that you personally want to get done. Like, you know, there's going to be a baby born in August. That's fine to put, you know, a baby blanket for August on the list. But don't set up your goals if you're if you are going to look at these as must do versus would like to do. Don't set up very specific goals. Set up generalized goals for yourself if you're interested in setting up goals. I did want to address one thing which comes up very frequently in my goals videos and in some of the other videos where I've discussed things like how I have my yarn organized or how I think about uh, planning things and stuff. So I am very organized by necessity. Uh, my brain goes at 900 miles a minute every single day. It barely shuts off to fall asleep most nights. So I find things like list making and stuff like that. I even discussed this in the, the housekeeping video that I did on my housekeeping schedule and planner. Um, I don't set these things out as a must-do list. They are reminders for myself. I literally would forget to put on pants walking out the door some days if I didn't have some parts of my life organized and free up that brain brain space to be able to remember normal things. Um, I am very ditzy. I am extremely forgetful. If you guys have not figured that out yet uh, here on my channel, but routine systems in place to help remind myself, these are things that help me just to function. They also help keeping on a routine, also helps with migraines. I've had an issue with migraines since I was a teenager. So having things on a routine and a cycle and things like that really benefit, benefit me overall. So I'm not organized by nature. I'm organized by design. I have had to learn tools to help myself get to where I am and where I appear to be organized to you guys. But the truth is, is I am a big crazy ball of who knows what running around 90% of the time. So this is a learned skill for me. This is not an eight. This is not through skill and practice. This is not something that, or this is through skill and practice, or through practice. This is not something that, you know, I'm just an organized person. I'm very far from being organized. So 
all that out of the way up front at the beginning of the video, let's crack on. So I will have a couple of affiliate links down in the description box below through Amazon. Um, if Amazon has the paper pack and everything I use to cover my journal this year, I will have those linked. I also have a link for the 100 page composition notebook that is the core base of my journal for this year. Uh, I will also link any ephemera packs and things like that that are associated with this project. When you click an affiliate link, I do receive a certain portion of money from those, but in no way, shape, or form does it drive up the cost on your end. It's just a, hey, you advertised for us, here's a little extra blip of cash. Uh, I will have a video coming out hopefully on Thursday if I have time to edit it and get it ready that includes things like the uh, basic, core basic, paper crafting supplies that I find that from the beginning I've used and continuously used or things that I wish I had had in the beginning I, that will also include a whole bunch of affiliate links. So just giving you a heads up of what is coming up Saturday or Sunday will also be when I do the share of my advent calendar for Aberdeen Wool Company. So there will not be a show and tell this week. We should be back on our normal schedule of Tuesday being random information, Thursday being a show and tell video, and Saturday being some sort of, you know, fiber content, or in this case for the rest of the month, it'll be the Aberdeen Wool Company. Um, if there are other videos that I need to squeeze in over the course of the month, I will, of course, squish those in there, but I do want to keep my content to where you're not having to look at this every single day uh, and share the love with some of the other channels out there because there are some amazing channels that you guys should be watching aside from just watching me. All right, let's crack on. So this is my journal. The paper pad for this is Crafting with My Nomies from Photo Play. And I did use some of the stickers, obviously. A lot of the paper has gone into this. We'll do a quick flip through and then I'll give you my, my goals. So I use a, I discovered over the last couple of years, I am using a lot, a lot of these flipping pages or waterfall pages in my journal. So I did add significantly more of these into my journal for this year. I did highly focus on that. This is where I will be putting my yarny finished objects. And then I use one of the stick, actually I use two because I have two sheets of the stickers, but um, so I could flip to the back and this will be where I put my non-yarny FOs and see I have paints and stuff like that on this side. And then back here, I use like little balls of yarn and like there's glitter. So you can see where like things change. I was very pleased with that little detail that I shoved in there. I did edge all of my pages in washi tape just because it makes them pretty and I like them. This year I did an additional cardstock page here where I typed up things that I wanted to tally that I make. So this year I have shawls, hats, scarves, blankets, dishcloths, slash mug rugs, sweaters, and cards. That will be where I tally my finished objects. Normally I put that on a single page back here, but I wanted a little bit more organization to it this year. Back here, I have the supplies that I want to focus on this year in using. And that will be fingering weight yarns, red heart slash impeccable, bulky yarns, cake yarns, donated hats, donated shawls, donated dishcloths slash mug rugs, six by six paper pads, 12 by 12 paper pads, paper packs, washi tape, and sticker packs. So as I finish up any of these items, they will be marked on this sheet. As I finish up these items, they will be on that sheet. And I did just insert this in here using washi tape to splain it in, just like I do with my yarn bingo cards every month. My next divider has a pocket on it. This is a slightly tighter pocket. This is right before we're getting into the individual projects with project notes and information about the pattern. On this side, we have a much deeper pocket and this is where I'll be putting my ball bands as I use those every month. I'll just drop my empty ball bands in there and that way I can jump in on Terry over at Yarn Joys, uh, sharing your ball bands. Also Yarn Bingo from 
It originated with Llama Mama Caleb, but Robin Kirkpatrick has taken over doing our cards. Uh, one of our squares on that is collecting your ball bands and seeing what they look like. Last year, my box pretty much just contains my mass market yarns, my big box store yarns, but I did have well over 200 of those. I think it was 209 of those and then another 50 plus in independent dyed or specialty yarns. So I take these out every month, bulldog clip, clip them together. I have a stack on my cart by my desk and I just stick my bulldog clips in there when they get full. This is the section where we will start off with the pattern name or project name, the yarn weight, what kind of yarn it was, what the colorways are, the hook, the needle. I am going to do this slightly differently this year. We're going to do one project per page and I'm going to scrapbook pictures individually on these pages instead of saving that for the end of the year, hopefully like I did last year. But we have quite a large section for that. Once again, we have another pocket here. This is another slightly tighter gusseted pocket, softly gusseted pocket. So far, I have not decided if I need another waterfall or a pocket on this one. I think I need a waterfall for this one. This will be where I make notes of any of the information of the stuff that is not yarn related. So 3D prints, um, card making, journal making, things like that. A lot of that information is going to get filled in here if I have notes and information I need on those projects. Those tend to not have as many notes as my other like yarny crafts do. So I'm not anticipating a whole lot going in here. So I did only set aside a handful of pages for that. I still need to decorate my back cover inside. And then we have the final back of my journal. So I do still have a little bit of work left to do on this journal to have it completely ready to go, but it was ready enough to be able to share. So when we first come in here, y'all will have noticed there is a typed page at the beginning on my first waterfall slip here. And that is my crafty goals. The next thing I need to type up are the projects I kind of hope to focus on this year. One of them has already gotten started and I'm very excited to talk about that in another video. So my 2022 crafty goals. I want to finish and frog all of my projects from 2021. So I do have quite a few projects. Some of them were year long projects like the murder mystery or cozy murder mystery cow with Christy Cook over at Tea Doddles. Some of them are socks that I started that just got stuck under a chair and haven't been touched. Some of them are larger projects that I just got distracted and pulled away from. So I do want to either frog or finish all of those projects in the course of this year. Last year we did excellent with that, but I do have far more wits left over than I did in 2020. So it might take me a little while this time. I want to use 75 pounds in supplies in my finished objects. So my total weight for finished objects Yarny and non-yarny, I would like to be around 75 pounds again this year. I want to work into 2,500 grams or 25 100 gram hanks of fingering weight yarn. 25 actually comes from me wanting to set up my own advent calendar again next year. I was unable to do that last year. Then things happened and I was unable to even open the box that I, or keep up with opening the box that I had purchased. So 25 is not as random as it sounds. It also will help me work down some of the fingering weight yarns. I have almost two full, what's this, six feet? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Two full six foot sections of fingering weight yarn over here. So would really like to start wheedling some of that back. And that's not including some of the hand dyes that I purchased in 2021 that have not been put on the shelf, but have been kept specially to decorate. A lot of fingering weight yarn, but I do have a fun idea for some of them. I want to work down my bulky yarns, particularly I'd like to at least use 25 100 gram hanks out of my stash. Uh, I have a little over one full column, so six foot column of bulky weight yarns over there. My, my wall here goes from fingering to bulky. 
my cakes are on the opposite side of the room if you're new to my channel and that don't remember me filming in front of the cake wall. I do have two bookcases full of cake yarns on the other side of the room. So I do have, you know, six feet of bulky weight yarn down there with some others scattered throughout it. So I would like to at least work into or work from 25 skeins of bulky weight yarn. That one is more because, not just because I have a surplus of it. I don't reach for bulky weight very often. It's not my go-to weight of yarn. So I really would like to use what I have because I do really love what I have. It's not a, you know, I don't like it. I don't use it. I do love it. I really do like it. I just don't reach for it because it's not my preferred weight of yarn. Work down my Red Heart and Impeccable Yarns, at least 25 skeins of that. Once again, I was making great progress, received a wonderful gift from Erica over at the Lopsided Crafter, and it re-expanded particularly that section of my stash. So I would like to get to where I have holes appearing in that part of my stash. Red Heart and Impeccable are perfectly fine yarns. They're just not yarns I reach for frequently. I do prefer Premier Anti-Peeling. Excuse me. Premier Anti-Pilling Yarn for my standard worsted weight projects, and I also love the Premier Basics Yarn. I have other yarns, you know, like the Knit Picks Brava Yarn that I use a lot. I prefer those worsted weight yarns, and those are the ones I am reaching for. So I would like to work out the ones I'm not reaching for and just make beautiful projects to push on out. Use 25 cakes from the cake wall. So this is a reoccurring theme. Uh, I would like to just start working down some of my cakes. I do have my red and green Premier Sweet Rolls pulled out to do a Christmas blanket using Fiber Spider's Glorious Granny tutorial. So hopefully come like July, August time when it's too hot to do big projects, I'll be starting working on my Christmas blanket. Um, I have some really pretty cotton yarns that are over there that I would like to start using and really focusing on. And I still, once again, have a whole bunch of Lion Brand Mandala that I would like to work through. So come Advent or Lenten time, once again, I will probably do donated shawls, kind of trying to do a shawl a week during the course of Lent for the purpose of donation. So that will probably be what happens with that again. That's how we used it, how we ended up using it so much last year. Um, but I do want to focus on trying to use some of these cakes because some of these are absolutely stunning and I would really, really, really love to see some of these in projects finally. I would like to finish 10 blankets. Now, I'm saying that knowing I already have four started and there's like two other ones that are kind of started. They're more scrappy in nature, so they're a work on it as you gain scraps kind of projects, but... Uh, I did say only 10, knowing that in my mind, I already had four that were well underway, including the Cozy Murder Mystery Cow Blanket, my Hexagon Blanket in Jewel Tones using Impeccable. I have the UNC Blanket that I'm still working on that I need to finish for one of my cousin's kids. You know, we there are blankets already well underway. My DK weight scrap corner to corner squares. I mean, I've got almost enough. So by the time we hit the mandala cake goal in the spring, we'll probably have that blanket done too. So I knew we'd be well underway. That should be, I should be able to get all 10 this year. And anything from newborn size up counts as a blanket. So I also have a baby blanket that I've already got started. I would like to donate 25 hats. Now, I have not decided who I'm going to be donating my hats to this year. I don't particularly have a whole bunch of necessarily blue yarns for Hat Not Hate. I don't necessarily do a whole lot of sets. So I, I am actually going to be working with one of our local charities, hopefully, to see what their need is coming into winter of 2022 and try to work locally this year for the hats goal. I want to donate 25 washcloths and mug rugs. So once again, I would like to send Rose a box of dishcloths for Wishes for Wings. Also, as I have mentioned before here on the channel, Classy Kim is doing, she would like to have mug rugs while she did a big thing in October of 2021 where she was requesting, you know, an initial donation during uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. She would like to continue her goal throughout the year of receiving mug rugs 
so she can include them in little packages for women who are going to be going into their preoperative state and postoperative state, just knowing somebody's thinking about them. So I would like to have 25 dish cloths and 25 mug rugs to donate to those two women specifically for their charities. And mug rugs are so easy to send off. So are washcloths. It's, it's uh, very easy to send those off compared to blankets and shawls, which tend to get much bulkier. I want to donate at least five shawls. I think last year I ended up donating like 35 shawls. So I think we'll make that goal. Especially if that's what I focus on during Lent. I want to knit or crochet one sweater. Once again, I'm just doing the goal of one sweater and I already have it started. So I'm pretty excited about that. I want to do 400 cards once again, just like last year, I have a bunch of partial cards already started that did not get counted towards 2021. So I think we'll have the first 200 knocked out fairly quickly and easily this year. The next 200 will be a little bit more of a stretch. I want to start my Christmas cards in July this year. I do not want to be go coming into Thanksgiving still trying to finish my Christmas cards. I would like to have those done early. Finished 25 rolls of washi tape. Last year during the month of December, I finished pretty much that off on its own. I want to use up two complete six by six paper pads. I want to finish one paper pack. I want to do one or two 12 by 12 paper pads, which I do have significant progress towards one already done. And I would like to finish three packages of stickers, not enamel dots, but actually stickers. I'm really bad about not using my stickers and I would really like to focus on using some of my older stickers out of my collection before they start losing their stick. So those are my goals. I think those are pretty simple goals. I know that sounds like a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff to go through. Um, but really, based on where I have semi-finished projects and whips already underway and what I know I need to get done, you know, sending out my own Christmas cards, sending out my Thanksgiving cards, sending out Easter cards, the goals that I, I generally have for friends and family anyway or projects that I already do during... Advent, normally I do hats to donate. During Lent, I normally do shawls to donate. With things like that that are already in place in my life, I have a feeling I'm not going to have too much of an issue hitting a lot of the more specific goals that I have circled up. Like I said, at the uh, when I did the 2021 in review, while I did not donate any hats, I do have five or six hats already ready to donate. So those would go to the donated in 2022 pile instead of towards the 2021 goal originally. So I do have other personal goals. I would like to try to follow along with Bourbon Creek Crafts year, you know, supplies that she focuses on every month. Um, there are a couple other, uh, they are official collaborations out in the YouTube and Instagram universe. I'm not an official collaborator and don't want to be an official collaborator, but I would like to participate in those kind of on my own just to help with uh, inspiration. Remember, once again, these are not must-do things. These are inspiration to remind myself of what I wanted to do. So these are not task list, punch list demands. This is just gentle reminders of how to stay focused for me. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop a comment down below in the description box. Double check your subscription, not just to my channel, but to other channels that you regularly watch as you're watching them. And double check to make sure you're still subscribed to the channels you want to be subscribed to. Click the notification bell if you want to get notified when we're uploading videos. And as always, you guys, I love you so much. I hope you're having a wonderful, fantastic day. And I look forward to talking to you guys real soon. Bye, guys.